Well, first of all, thanks for inviting me. I hope one day to be actually physically present at one of your events. Uh, and I'm very much looking forward, as I'm sure we all are, to the first face-to-face -face conference. And I hope it won't be too long before we can have one of those. SNP conference is always an event to, to meet friends, to, to catch up with people. Uh, and it is difficult not to be able to do that. But of course, a pandemic has changed everything. And it's simply a truism to say that it's also held back the work that was being done on the key issues around independence. Now, I understand the frustration about that because I feel the frustration about that. I was in government at the time and we had to stop doing that on the, on the 16th of March 2020 to take all the resources that we had and to apply them to the challenge that the nation was facing. And I want us to get back to the stage where that work is being done. But we are now beginning to move forward again. And I think we can see light at the end of the tunnel. And for me, it's very important that we work together to put the independent show back on the road and to prepare for a referendum that we must win and one that must also demand and receive international recognition so that we can rejoin the family of nations. For me, tomorrow that sort of starts in earnest. We're coming back into a conference at which we will reaffirm our commitment to independence strengthened by a governmental majority in Parliament for independence and by the work that is underway to build the confidence of every party member in communicating the message. And we've also got a different message, a message not about what you're going to do, what we're going to do to overcome a blockage from the UK government, but a message that says the Scottish people have endorsed the referendum bill that bill will come into Parliament when it is safe to do so, safe to have the type of face-to-face -face campaign that we need to have to convert people to independence. And then we will proceed with that. And it will be up to the UK government to decide whether they really want to impede that, for example, by going to court to stop the will of the Scottish people expressed in an electoral mandate from being effected. Of course, I retired from Parliament and government in, in May. Uh, in, in a sense, I'm living out that remark by Tony Benn that uh, I said he retired to spend more time on, on politics. It seems that way anyway. But I, I'm happy that this summer I've been able to start the flow of information again to members. And I hope that as a party, we'll build on that in the autumn with uh, a publication we can distribute widely with more information, with the work restarting in government on some of the issues that government alone can work on, but there are other issues that we can work on, and I'll, I hope to say something about that at, at conference uh, this week. And one of the things I've also tried to do is to re-establish dialogue across the guest movement on the basis of, of shared ambition and mutual respect. And we need both of those things, but we are very much in it together. The whole yes movement won't agree on everything, but it always will agree on the main thing, I hope. We need the, a unity of purpose in order to convert Scotland to a new future. That should be strong enough to unite us. It should be strong enough to allow us to work together even if we disagree on the detail of some of the policies and even if we approach that in a different way. But we have to find a way to work together so that we can capitalise on the talents and the strengths right across the movement. Now, that task that we've set ourselves that we all came into politics for. It's really about belief. It's about restoring belief in Scotland by the from the people who live here. It's about having confidence, ambition and hope. It's about believing that we are no better than anyone else, but we're certainly just as good and absolutely as entitled to run our own affairs. There's plenty to complain about in the current situation, about the, the state that we are in, about Johnston and his government, about the way in which it's run, about the shambles of Brexit. But we can't, we, we're not there just to remind people of the state we're in. We're there and we're here to envision and excite people with a state we could choose to be in, that we have the right to choose to be in. I frequently say that independence is normal. But the normal can be an exciting and inspiring, and indeed it's our job to make the normal exciting and inspiring. We need to ensure that we excite and inspire every single person who lives in this country. I don't believe there is anybody that cannot be excited and inspired by the right to choose 
By better pensions, yes. By a fairer and more just society, yes. Quality of opportunity, yes. No child left behind, no citizen ignored, yes. But above all, the freedom to choose and to choose together. People will have heard me often quote John Adams, the first the vice president of the United States and the second president, who talked about uh, independence in the American context as beginning government anew from the foundations and building as we choose. Yeah, we need firm, fair foundations. But the big thing about independence is the right to choose, to choose ourselves, to choose together as a nation and to be able to do so without interference. There have been some tough times in recent months. We've had a significant election victory. We've established a new way of doing government, but it's been tough. And we've achieved things despite the difficulties. And we have to go on doing that. The job's not yet done. This is another step this week. We have to take it with confidence. We have to try and work with as many people as possible. And we have to make sure that we build the belief and the ambition of our fellow Scots. Our job is to inspire. Our job is to persuade. Our job is to set an example about how things can be done. I'm quite certain that we're able to do so, and I'm certain that we will do so. And it just lies in front of us. We're closer and closer every single day. And I'm glad to spend a bit of my time making sure that uh, I can play a role in that. And I hope helping people to see that we have far more that unites us and divides us. That we have far more than simply the politics of where we are. We have a new way of doing things. We've proved that already. We have a desire to do things differently. And we have a desire to allow people after all, who have been forbidden for a long time to allow people to choose their own future. That's what independence is about. Maybe normal, but it's good. And we're going to get there. I'm sure we'll all have a great conference too. Thanks.